The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. You look in the Luke's Gospel, in the first part of chapter number 15, he deals with the parable of the lost sheep, and he deals with that lost lamb, and leaving the 99 and going after the one. And Jesus has always been in the business of going after that lost lamb. And you and I are products of him coming to where we were at and changing our lives by his marvelous grace. You think about in the second part of Luke, in verses 8 through 10, the parable of the lost silver, the lost coin, and how this dear lady lost that lost coin. And then when it was found, she called her neighbors together and began to rejoice in the fact that that which was lost was now found. And you and I can rejoice over the fact that one day Jesus found you and I where we were at and redeemed us and brought us to himself and changed us by his marvelous grace. I'm like your pastor. There is a lot of heresy going on even in our Baptist circles that are, are teaching that, that you can't be saved unless you're the elect of God. Well, let me say that whosoever will may come. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And this parable is one of those passages where he defines three different times of his willingness to find that which was lost. And, and you think about a parable as a earthly story with a heavenly meaning behind it. And Jesus is teaching his disciples and teaching those that are prevalent around him. And he's showing them the condition of the lost and he's showing them the condition of what happens when they are found. So in Luke chapter number 15 and verse number 11 is the third portion of this passage that Jesus begins to describe. For in verse number 11, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. That is everything that he has. That is everything that he's worked for. That is everything that he's obtained in his lifetime. Now he is about to divide that between the two sons. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living, worldly living, godless living, a world without God. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. Well, if you know Jewish culture, Jewish culture would not have anything to do with a pig or a swine. So it was contrary for this young man to find himself at the hog pen, but that's where it related and that's where it ended up and that's where he found himself at the end of this journey into the far country. And when he had fain had filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him, notice that phrasing in your Bible, and no man gave unto him. Sooner or later, you'll come to the end of the road. You'll come to the end of that journey. You'll come to the end of that time when you figure out and you realize that I've given everything that I have into this cesspool of sin that I've been living in, and now I'm empty and no man gave unto him. Notice what the scripture said in verse number 17. And when he came to himself. Every person in this building that is wandering away from God must have a God awakening moment when you come to yourself. It must be a place and a time in your spiritual journey. If you're saved by the grace of God and you've wandered away from the Lord, then it must be a time where you get that God consciousness again and you realize 
man, I would have it a lot better at the house of God. I would have it a lot better in the will of God. I would have it a lot better in the perfect plan of God than I have it now, wasting all the time and all the effort and all the things that I've in, involved myself in that does not glorify God. And here you come to that place where you've got to come to yourself. Every teenager in this building, you've got to come to yourself. Every child, every adult, every person in this building has got to come to a self moment where you recognize this is not the right pathway for me and I need to get back to the Father's house. So here, he, he begins to recognize when he came to himself, he said, how many of the hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. He had a house that had everything. He had a home that had everything. He had a life that had everything. He had everything that he could ever imagine and he left all of that behind to take his journey into the world, into the far country, into a place that was against his Jewish nature, into a place that was a, a Gentile world that he should have never been in, into a place that was cursed, into a place that was out of the will of God, and he finds himself in that place, and he said, I perish with hunger. I'm dying out here. I'm all alone and I'm by myself. Let me just say, for a little while, those friends will be with you. For a little while, those friends will be beside of you. For a little while, they'll, they'll party along with you, but there'll come a day when you lose all that you've got and you have no money left and you have no you left and you're sitting there by yourself that they're gonna forsake you and you're gonna find yourself all alone sitting in that place with despair, with heartache, and you're gonna feel like you're dying all by yourself because you're perishing there alone. And here, the servant and, and the young man says, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He's rehearsing what he's about to tell the father. He's rehearsing, I'm not worthy to be the father's son anymore, but the hired servants at my father's house has it better than I have it. And they've got food on the table, and they've got a place to sleep, and, and they've got a protective uh, man that is there to help them. And I'm out here in the wilderness all alone by myself. I feel like I'm dying because I took the journey I never should have taken. And here he says, I'll go and cry to my father. So in verse number 20, what does he do? He, he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. I don't have time to preach all of this, but let me just say this morning, you and I better be glad that God saw us like we were. And, and he did not, he did not throw us aside. He did not throw us to the others, but he came to where you were at and he came to where I was at and he loved us just like we was. And I'm glad that there was a heavenly savior that this story is talking about that loved you and me just like we were. He was willing to give his life. He was willing to die. He was willing to shed his blood. But then he came on a journey looking for lost lambs and lost coins and lost sons just like you and I. And he came to this earth to seek and to save that which was lost. And you and I were candidates of that because I was a sinner and you were a sinner. And Jesus loved us with everything that he had that we we could be redeemed by the marvelous grace of God and be children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when you think about what the scripture is defining for us, this heavenly story that has an earthly meaning and an earthly meaning that has a heavenly story, Jesus is defining for these people that he has an everlasting love for them. For 
the son now arises and goes to his father. And when he was a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Do you imagine? Can you see it in your mind's eye for a moment? Can you understand for just a few moments of time this morning that this young man comes from the hog pen? And if you've ever been near the hog pen, what is it? It stinks, right? Now there's some country folks in this building. It smells. It is not a place that you want to abide. You, you see the flies and, and all the junk and all the mess and, and the hogs waller in their own mess. And here this young man is in the midst of that mess with those hogs and, and, and he's stinking and he's filthy and he's dirty and he's empty and he's broken and he's left everything behind and he starts this journey back home and and the whole time the father is sitting, I can imagine, on the porch. And he's looking out over the horizon just saying, I wonder will this be the day my son comes home. And there as he comes to where the father is, the father did not wait for the son to come to him. The father ran to where he was at when he saw the silhouette of his son coming in the distance. And now the son gets close enough that the father recognizes, that's my boy, that's my boy. That's the one that we've been longing for. That's the one that we've been praying for. That's the one that we have been looking for. And now now I see him coming this way and he runs to him and he kisses him and he falls on his neck. He didn't look at the dirtiness. He didn't look at the filth. He didn't remember the smell. He just knew this was my son that was dead and now he's come home to be light, alive again. And Jesus is telling us, yes, sometimes your life gets dirty and gets messy, but I've come to where you were at to redeem you and wash you in his precious blood and he takes the scars away he takes the pain away he takes the suffering away he takes the heartache away he takes all the stuff away and Jesus redeems us by his precious blood and he falls on our neck he kisses us and he forgives us and he washes all that sin and stuff away and you and I have been redeemed by the blood of the crucified one. I should have stayed in the hog pen. You should have stayed in the hog pen. But Jesus lifted you and carried you and helped you in the midst of what you were facing. And Jesus took it all away and washed it all away and cast it as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered against you again. I'm talking about a God that loves us with an everlasting love. Nobody has ever loved us like Jesus. Nobody has ever done for you and I what the Son of God has done. And Jesus came to where you were at and where I was at and he come to love you back to himself. I don't have time to give you all of this but the wasted years that this young man experienced there was a cause to that. For there to be an inheritance, the father would have to have died. The son got so rebellious toward the rules of the house that he looked at the father and he said, well, if you have to die, I want what's coming to me. What is this world producing? A rebellious generation. What is this scripture talking about? A rebellious son that literally looks in the face of a good father, a loving father, a kind father, a father that has given everything that he can to help his son. And now he looks in the eyes of his father and said, I want what's coming to me. Is that not a generation that we're witnessing? Is that not a world system that we're witnessing? Is that not a governmental system that we're witnessing? We want what's coming to us. We don't want to work for it. We don't want to, we don't want to go through the, the pain of it. We want what's coming to us now. And this young son looked at his father and says, Give unto me and give to me what's due me now. Rebellion. You think about apathy, he divided unto him his living. At any moment of that journey, at any moment of that time, he could have looked at the father and said, no, 
I, I'm sorry. But apathy caused him to waste his years, caused him to walk away from the Father. Pride is one of those factors. He gathered all and took it into the far country. He took everything that he had and took with him into this journey. He took the, the, the all. Can you imagine everything that the father had worked for all of his life? However old this father was that the Bible is describing, this parable is describing to us, he took everything and divided it unto this son. Popularity is always something that we use as a catalyst to walk away from the will of God. We want to be popular. We want to fit in with the crowd. We, we want our peers to like us. We want our peers to accept us. We want, to, we want to fit in with the ones that surround us instead of saying, Lord, let me influence the ones around us. The pride of this young man, he, he walked away from his father. He, he finds himself where he gathered everything and he took his journey into a far country. The popularity of this young man, when he got to the country where he was longing for, he had a friend on every corner. Why? Because he had the inheritance of his father. He had the money in his pocket. He was able to buy the wine. He was able to do all the stuff. He was able to go down into that far country, waste all of his substance in riotous, worldly, ungodly living. And he went down there and all of the people thronged around him while he was popular, while he had the money. What you need to understand as a young person in this building is that sometimes Satan will use you. Your friends will use you. The crowd will use you and this world will use you as long as you've got something that you can give to them. But you let the day come when you're empty and you're, you don't have any money left and you're broken and, you, and you, everything's gone. You'll find yourself just like this young man did all by himself. I think about the cost of the wasted the cause of the wasted years the the cost of it he left all in verse 13 in verse number 13 he wasted it all look at all the alls he took his journey he left all he wasted it all with substance with righteous living in verse 14 and when he had spent all he spent everything and then verse 14 through 16 he lost it all no man gave unto him everything that he had is now gone Everything that the Father had just given him is now gone. But the cure for these wasted years for every person in this building, if you're living in a life as a prodigal son or a daughter, the cure is this. He came to himself. He realized his sinful condition in verse 17. Every person in this building must have a come to yourself moment. When you realize this is not all that I thought this was going to be. This is not what I thought that the world and the flesh and the devil had presented to me. See, he'll sell you a bill of goods to get your life away from God and to watch you suffer at the same time. And the difference between Satan and Jesus, Jesus never wants you to suffer. Jesus always loves you. Jesus wants to come to help you. He does not want you to waste your life, mess your life up, wreck your life, or get your life so in in the, in the pit of despair that you feel like all hope is gone. Jesus is the deliverer that can help you in the midst of what you're facing. See, he turned away from his sinful condition in verse 18, I will arise and go to my father. Verse 18, he said, I've sinned against heaven and before thee he confessed his sinful condition. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every person in this building can have a come to yourself moment. Every person in this building, you are not too far gone for Jesus to rescue you in the midst of where you are. You say, preacher, you don't understand what I've done, what I've been involved in, what's happened to me. I'm glad that Jesus does not look at our stench. He looks at our sin and said, I died for your sin that I can wash it away and forgive you and cleanse you and give Give you a life like you've never dreamed or witnessed of before. The consolation of this, I love this, in 
Verse 20, he arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and he kissed him. Aren't you glad for the day when you were living in the far country that Jesus had compassion on you? Aren't you glad for the day when I was lost in sin and undone and had no way of escape from the circumstance and the situation that I'd gotten myself into that Jesus started looking for you and for me. And Jesus came to where you were at and came to where I was at. And there he loved us unconditionally and he gave his life for us. And there he picked us up out of the cesspool and the hog pen of this world. And there he changed us and redeemed us and washed us in his precious blood. And now you're singing in the choir and now you're teaching a Sunday school class and now you're sitting on a church pew and now now you're saved by the grace of God and now you even get the privilege to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ I'm telling you what a savior that Jesus comes to us when we come to ourselves and here the father ne never never quit loving him for when he was a great way off, he saw it. I can imagine again him on the porch and looking out over the horizon and looking out over the dusty road. And he wondered every day. And he told his wife every day, I wonder if this would be the day that my son is going to come home. Is this going to be the day that he finally gets enough of enough of enough that he'll come home? And there that one day comes and he sees the silhouette of a man coming, a young man coming coming down the dusty road and the closer he got to the house where the father was he started to recognize and he said baby this is our son this is the one we've labored for this is the one we prayed for this is the one we have wanted to come home for so long and now I see him coming and the father got so excited I don't believe he could stand it any longer he ran to where the son was and he fell on the neck of the son and he loved him and he cared for him and he took care of him and he forgave him. He never gave up. So fathers and mothers, I, I, I want to encourage you. Don't give up on your son. Don't give up on your daughter. Don't give up on your loved one. Don't give up on that friend. Don't give up on that one because Jesus can still change them and save them and redeem them by his marvelous grace. Hallelujah blessed be his holy name and here the father never quit loving him the father had compassion on him and the father now forgives him for notice what he said after he went and ran and fell on his neck and he kissed him and the son said unto him I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and no more worthy to be called thy son but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe see there the boy was naked the boy was dirty the boy was filthy the boy was messed up and had the tarnish of sin all over him over the condition of where he was at but the father was the one that saw him just like like he was not the other crowd at the house but just the father and aren't you glad when Jesus found you naked and blind and messed up in sin he saw you just like you were and there redeemed you and washed you in his precious blood and there when he presents him back to the father and back to the house of the father he's now clothed and he's got a robe on his back put a robe on him bring the best not the one in the closet that's broken. Not the one in the closet that's tattered. Bring the best robe. And he puts it on the son. And he put it on him and he put a ring on his hand. That ring was a signet in those days of ownership. That ring was a signet. Uh, we could go to any store and show the ring and it would be charged to the father's account. Oh, aren't you glad for the day that Jesus put the robe on you, but then he give you the robe, the ring uh, uh, on your finger to let you know you're a part of the family of faith and the family of God, and Jesus loves you with everything that he had. He said, put a ring on his hand, and then he said, put shoes on his feet. He's been in that hog pen. He's dirty. He's nasty. He's broken. He's tattered. 
put that robe on him, put the ring on him, signifies ownership, signifies that everything that he's got is paid for now. Oh, hallelujah, everything that you were is paid for now. Everything that I was is paid for now by the marvelous grace of God. And you've been changed and now you're a child of the king. And he puts heavenly shoes on your feet to let you walk in his mercy, to let you walk in his grace, to let you walk in his kindness, to let you walk in his forgiveness, to let you walk in his love, to let you walk in his forgiveness. And here the Father says, put some shoes on his feet. So every step he takes, he's stepping in the forgiveness of the Father. Oh, hallelujah. Aren't you glad this morning that when you were out wasting your life and your time, away from God that the Heavenly Father sent His very best, His only Son, to come to you and to come to me. And if you could just realize where you are, realize what you are, and realize what you've done, forgiveness is yours. And Jesus will take you just like you are, and Jesus will change your life today. The old hymn, the old song I've wondered far away from God, now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long, I've tried, Lord, I'm coming home. Coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide thine arms of love, Lord, today I'm coming home. Would that be your testimony this morning? Would you let Jesus help you just where you are? Also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.